Fellas, Witch Queen is out, and I gotta say, man, I have had a blast learning the lore, the campaign, messing around with Savathic, and just so you know, we are gonna be pumping out a review for the Legendary campaign, which will probably go live later this week. I actually wanna play through it one more time at least, just to get a real good feel for it. With that being said, though, we're gonna be making a quest guide today, and that's right, we're gonna be making quest guides for everything, and we're gonna be starting with the Exotic Grenade Launcher Parasite. Now, first off, we're gonna be showing lots of Witch Queen spoilers here, so if you you do not want any spoilers then please leave now as we're going to be showing gameplay of the throne world new activities and much much more now with that being said i have to also say that this quest is one of the funniest exotic quests bungie has ever pulled off so first in order to kick this quest off you have to finish the witch queen campaign now it doesn't matter if you either do it on normal mode or legendary just finish the campaign now once you're actually done with the campaign you'll speak with ikora and she'll have the of queens and worms quest for you to pick up which is the quest for Parasite. Then you'll go to Mara at the bottom of the Enclave, essentially the new firing range that Bungie added. And this is actually past the crafting area. Now there's so many goodies here with the lore and stuff and I really want to get into it, but I'm not going to get too carried away. We'll probably be covering it in our review. But after reaching this spot and interacting, you'll then have to complete the brand new strike called the Birthplace of the Vile, which is a scorn center strike that takes place in Savathun's throne world. Now I highly suggest guys throughout all of this and pretty much everything in regards to the campaign, cut your dialogues up and some subtitles. This is a great strike to kind of understand the origin of some of these worms, what's creating them and why. You also start understanding a little bit about this worm that you're dealing with. And I really like that inside of the strike, it has that dark pyramid architecture, which is like both creepy and beautiful at the same time. Now you're gonna be dealing with lots of scorn in this strike. So I highly suggest depending on Void 3.0 as the combination of aspects and fragments, especially inside of PVE are so good. Like literally outclasses anything we ever had before with our Void subclasses. Now upon dealing with the Warden of Harvest, you'll begin to revitalize Savathun's Worm, which would then take you to the next step where you actually have to go visit Finch in the Throne World. Now he'll give you a quest to find Cryptoglyph runes hidden throughout the Throne World. Now the first one is actually inside the Temple of Cunning. Now, just follow the diamond in game and it'll actually take you directly there it's in a dark cave through a portal across a bridge super far down into the hive depths into a place that looks like literal hive hell anyways once you get there a bunch of scorn will spawn wipe those guys out including the yellow bar at the end and that quest step is now complete and again at any point throughout these quests if you have an issue with finding something just start tracking it right now upon finishing this part the next step you got to defeat a hundred scorn in the throne world now it's other two crazy guys we did a couple public events there's also some lost sectors out there you can do that spawn scorn and we actually found this was a great time to kind of get the glaive out try a couple different combos and kill scorn but also kind of like explore the throne world at the same time but yes kill 100 scorn and once you complete this it's on to the first lost sector in the throne world now you have to find the entrance to the sepulcher lost sector in the fluorescent canal and then look for a larvae incubator at the end of that lost sector now the diamond will take you right to the lost sector drop down to this ledge to find the entrance you have to fight a few hive to open the doors to progress through it and once you get to the end and take out the hive boss activate the deep side thing in the middle of the room to open a section of the back wall so you can then jump up through and access the incubator now after finishing talking to the creepy worm who by the way is somehow weirdly cute to me the next step has you completing three different patrols in the fluorescent canal which is honestly easy enough self-explanatory guys just go pick up some patrols get some kills here and there now if you want this one done quickly i actually grabbed two regular patrols but then i ended up grabbing one of the gold patrols which was called mangle some muscle and it essentially just wanted me to defeat hive in the queen's bailey which honestly didn't even know what the hell a bailey even is turns out it's like where the king and queen live which is like much deeper into the fluorescent canal you'll go all the way there and for this particular patrol which you don't have to do but for this particular patrol i had to clear the area of all the hive but the reason why i said this patrol mission is kind of a good one to grab on your third one is because after you finish the third patrol step nine actually has you locating another cryptoglyph rune in the queen's bailey so you're already there but even if you aren't already there you can of course just put it in on your waypoint and the diamond would take you directly to the queen's bailey there once again a bunch of high will spawn including a big ogre take them down to collect the rune now this will actually take us to step 10 which has you finding the entrance to the metamorphous lost sector miasma which is actually in the swamp area of the throne world now go ahead and just fast travel back to the quagmire before you head there because it's just easier that way and once you get to the quest marker in the swamp the lost sector is right there and you'll actually see the lost sector logo on a rock nearby 
with the entrance right next to it. Get down there, take out the scorn, take out the hive, and you'll have to shoot some crystals to open the doors and then fall down into this pyramid-like structure to take out a scorn boss. Now you're going to get some loot, but make sure you don't jump back into the green light right next to the chest like I did because it literally shoots you right back to the top, which will require you to go all the way back around. So don't do that, guys. Instead, you just want to walk right around it to the deep site and activate it to reveal a doorway to where you've got to go, which is where you're going to interact again. Now you're going to speak with the worm to move on to step 12. And this step is to locate a cryptoglyph rune in the alluring curtain. Now, once again, you're going to fast travel back to the quagmire and follow the marker to the alluring curtain. You'll eventually get to an area where you got to make a lot of jumps. So make sure you've got a good amount of mobility. I actually ended up using like lion rampants for a second just to help me with some of these jumps, but just move in the general direction of the quest marker. And eventually you're going to get to some stairs that will take you up to the lucent hive boss. Now, if you are lost, just use this gameplay on screen to guide you there. And sometimes just watching someone making their way there really, really helps. Now next, you're going to defeat the boss to move on to step 13. Now here you got to find a deep side cache, which is essentially a chest that requires you to use the deep side buff and the marker will take you right to it. Now, once you actually activate deep side platforms will appear and on three of these platforms is a torch. You're going to shoot each torch to light them, which will reveal a chest down below back on the ground level. Now, after that, you've got one last lost sector to go. So back to Quagmire, you go and follow the quest marker once again. Now it's going to lead you right to the deep site location activated to reveal the path to the lost sector and once you're down there and you can see it just goes right around you got to clear out the enemies to lower the barrier blocking your way and through the barrier leads into the last room now in this room there's actually three hive platforms on the ground that you need to stand on until they are no longer lit up you'll know when you've activated them as they kind of explode in green light and you can actually see it filling up if you're looking down i just keep looking at it while you're standing on it and it'll just be filling up with that green light now you don't have to stand on these in any particular order you just got to get on them activate the platforms and clear the room of enemies and the hive door in the center room that was blocked by hive runes will now open head on in guys you're going to clear the ads kill the boss open the chest and then go interact with the hive worm once again now after all this you'll now go talk to finch to get the last step of the parasite quest to complete the parasitic pilgrimage mission which the quest marker will take you directly to now in this mission you're going to be tasked with powering up savathun's dying worm by bringing Bringing it to 16 wells of light before the timer runs out and she detonates. Now, I wish I can say I did this, guys. Bombad actually ended up picking it up with Icarus Dash on Top Tree Dom Blade, and he just scooted around everywhere and was picking them up. Now, you can actually attack while using her, which is pretty hilarious considering the dialogue that's going on here. But I would honestly advise just focusing on getting the worm to each one of these 16 wells, which in the area where you've got all these different obstacles going up and down, I know it can be pretty difficult. You do have a timer, though, that does show you how long you have before the worm detonates and you obviously have to get it done before it detonates so just rush around guys dodge enemies dodge the traps the obstacles the cursed thralls all in a race to save savathun's worm which i oddly became attached to now after you get through the well parts you're gonna have to activate deep sight resonance at the quest marker and jump up the platforms that appear to shoot a hive rune that's hanging from the ceiling then follow the arrow on your radar to the next area the apothecary now head through the portal to the next step of the quest and you're going to gather three hive lights. Essentially, you have to shoot and destroy a couple of hive crystals to be able to pick up the hive light that's been blocked nearby, which is pretty easy enough, guys. Follow the quest marker. Do this for the next two rooms while fighting off the hive. And once you've gathered all the hive lights, you just got to run, man. Follow the marker and get the heck out of there. You'll eventually reach a gated door and an ogre. Kill the ogre and activate the deep sight near there to lower the gate and head into the next encounter. Now it's time to begin the ritual. You're going to set the worm down in the center of the room 
Gorm and protect it with your life. But don't die, of course. Defeat the Gorm waves until you have to pick up the worm and head back off again towards the quest marker. Now, after a bit of platforming, you're going to arrive at another relatively large room with Mara at the center. You're actually going to take the worm to her and she'll happily put Savathun's worm inside of a grenade launcher for you. And just like that, guys, Parasite is yours. You'll use it to defend Mara as she completes whatever ritual thing she's doing. And that's it. That's the quest. Now, as far as what this grenade launcher is, we're going to be doing some damage testing with it this week, but it's got a couple things that's pretty unique to it. Number one, it's in Intrinsic perk is Worms Hunger, where the weapon fires hive worms, which explode on impact. And the size and damage of the explosion scales with the number of enemies you defeat it just before firing the weapon. It also comes with Worm Byproduct as the trait, taking damage from your own worm projectile detonation and powers your weapon for a short time. I will say this, guys, this weapon does not have a lot of range. I mean, you're literally shooting an entire baby worm larva at enemies. So you'll notice when you shoot it, it doesn't necessarily have a lot of arch. Either way, though, guys we're gonna be reviewing this weapon doing some damage comparisons i will say this though the overall quest hilarious one of the funnest exotic quests we have ever done now guys if this guide helped you it would help me tremendously if you hit the like button on this one we're trying to get more into guides and i really do want to make more quest guides so slapping that like button would help us tremendously well fellas and ladies thank you all for coming and watching and as always slap that like button like your mama told you right